Welcome to the ATP Project. You're with your host, Steve, and Laughing Nick. How are you today? I'm laughing again. I'm She's laughing, laughing in the again. last one as well, I know. What have you drank? What have you been drinking know. today? What have you been no eating today? No one today? sees what happens before the camera turns on. I get, I'm getting teased incessantly. I know. <laughs> I know. It's, it's funny you're getting teased, and, and, and it's funny today because then I'm, I'm going to now pick on myself straight off the bat because we're talking about anti-aging, yeah. and men are shit at aging. We, yeah. we die quicker than women yeah. um, because of a myriad of reasons that we're going to talk about today. Yep. But there's two aspects of anti-aging we're going to talk about. Yeah. The first one is premature death. Yes. We've got to stop that Yep. because that's, that's crazy stuff. Mm. Premature death, not yeah. just dying of old age. That's different. That I is. mean, self-destructing males typically yes. and females to a degree, and we die too quick. And yeah. then we're going to talk about longevity and looking at all the biochemical processes that keep us going longer. Yeah, so and what, tips what, and tricks around yeah, all of that. Which is what you want to hear. But we want to, yeah. I want to give you the first thing, the elephant in the room, is, is premature death. Mm. The two biggest killers are heart disease and cancers. Yeah. Are largely preventable. Lifestyle diseases. Yep, they primarily. are lifestyle diseases. Now, all right, you can get unlucky and get cancer, but yeah. we can certainly, we can't eliminate heart disease, we can't eliminate cancer. No. But we can reduce them, can't we? We can. And yeah. we're not going to talk about reducing smoking and mm-hmm. don't go People know out. all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. We, we don't want to bore you with the – we want to get into the nitty-gritty of mm. stuff. Mm. So, Nick, um, you know, we, the, it, is, it is a terrible thing, ageing, because we all go through it. Mm. Um, and as you get older, you start to – things start to not work as well. As I put on my glasses? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> my um, you know, 10 years ago, I didn't need glasses. No, I didn't need them four years ago. I know. It doesn't, and then once you get them, and I don't care what anybody says, once you get them, that's it. They start to decline very quickly. My wife's 44, and she's just got glasses. No? It's she's that age. Really, yeah. I was 44. Yeah. I was um, – it was pretty much 20. when I started here initially. I was uh, 20 a couple of years ago yeah. now, 20, no, I don't know. I don't know. It's about three or four years ago since yeah. I got them, about 40 something. something, something. Oh, she's so, so, I almost got a few of that. But, but, but it's funny because, because, you know, we are all about, you know, preventing disease. Yeah. And that's what naturopathy does. Mm. It, it, medicine is primarily focused on the treatment of disease, mm. which is great. Yeah. And, you know, well, kudos to them. But they're not really anti-aging people. No, they're um, not anti. They're, they're they're trying to fix a problem that's already there. Yeah, we're trying to well prevent the problem from coming about in the first place. Yep. Um, and then obviously how we can actually extend our um, longevity, so yes. our health span. Still, so there's a difference okay. between lifespan and health span. Well, what are they? So lifespan is obviously the amount of time that we're on Earth that we're alive, mm. but our health span is the amount of time that we're alive that we don't have any illness. Yeah. So health span is actually a lot shorter than our lifespan. So yes. what we want to try and do is extend the amount of years that we live mm. disease-free. Mm. And and I've, health, and I've had some funny emails about this, but I, I always say to people, the aim is to die healthy. Yes. That's you know, right. And people That's go, what are you talking about? But, but it is. I mean, but let's say we live to 100 mm. and, and at 99.5 years old, you start to go downhill. Yeah. Then, and, at, and at 99.4, you're kind of healthy. Mm. That's, that's that's a good life. Yeah. But most people these days, they 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 have a heart attack and, oh, I'm not really the same. Well, they've had a stroke and they're not the same. Or they're, they've got even just obesity mm. or they've got, you know, some chronic illness, arthritis or something that's keeping them back. Yeah. So, so I've just picked on two, mm. um, heart disease and cancer, and we'll try and group them together because mm. we want to get into the fun stuff about anti-aging. Yeah. But, but there, there, there's things that those things have in common. The first one is obesity, and that's completely treatable. Yes, it is completely treatable. So, so let's say someone comes to see you and they want to live longer and they're obese. What sort of things, what, what recommendations could you give to people, without going into too much detail because we've done obesity before, but... But, but why is obesity important to prevent not only premature death but longevity? Like what, what, what adverse effects does obesity have on oh, the body? So many adverse effects. So, um, well, they can create heart disease, diabetes, mm. Mm. Um, so many other issues. <laughs> um, so, the, honestly, the first thing you would do is look at their lifestyle before yeah. you do anything else. I mean, you don't, you don't go and see a practitioner, health practitioner, and say, give me a supplement to fix me because that's not how we work. Mm. It's, the, the supplement isn't going to work. So you're looking at their lifestyle factors, which are completely um, within your 
your control as to mm. what you want to do um, for your health in regards to diet, exercise, stress management, sleep, all the things that we always talk about. Incredible, isn't it? So, so you know, one of the more common, and, and look, I think people understand the link between obesity and heart disease, mm. but what they may not understand is obesity also increases the rates of cancer. Yes. Now, in men, um, our, our most common cancer is a prostatic cancer. Mm. And a prostate is a gland that's downstairs there. Mm. But, and people understand the link between uh, obesity and prostatic cancer, but there's a, there's a very strong link between that. And mm. as men age, most men my age are overweight or obese, mm. about 60 to 80%. It's, mm. it's, it's, it's catastrophic, yes, our age. 54-year-old, mm. we're crap. Yep. We are unhealthy. Mm. We typically don't exercise. And I remember when I was in practice, you, you get people talking about, you know, do you exercise? Oh, I used to play football. Mm. It's like, and we just talked before the podcast about things we used to do. Yes. And it's like people carry that to the future. Yeah, 40 years ago, and they still think they're an yeah, athlete yeah, yeah. When, they, when an athlete 40 yeah, years ago. Yeah, I, I used earlier. to play A grade indoor cricket when I was mm. 18. Mm. And I, but I, if someone says to me, do I exercise? I wouldn't mention that. No. You know, and you shouldn't because that's living in the past. Yeah. So, right. so you've got to be real with yourself. You've got to be honest. Mm. And if you're overweight or obese, the first thing you should do is get rid of the body fat. We know what causes it now. Mm. It's, mm. Not, it's not like a, oh, I should try. And if you want to live longer and live healthier, mm. then you've got to get rid of that excess body fat. That's right. Yeah. Because you know, let's get a bit nerdy. Um, yeah. Excess body fat increases. There's, there's an there's a enzyme in fat cells called aromatase. Mm. And it increases um, the conversion of testosterone to uh, estrogen, estradiol, a potent estrogen. Now, men, like me, if I was overweight and I had a bit of a gut, I would also grow boobs, mm. and that's the high estrogen. We were talking about that before <laughs> we the podcast. We were talking really. about that. Yeah. Not you, into, not, not you not growing me. boobs. I've, yeah. got, I've got rippling, muscly you do. chest. You pecs. Look at pecs. pecs. Other pecs. pecs. Yeah. I've got boobs. <laughs> no. But I can't look at you now. Um, <laughs> but, but let's say a woman is obese. Yes. Um, they got higher estrogen. What, what, what does high estrogen do to women with regards to cancer? Well, uh, breast cancer is very common with high estrogen. Yep. Yeah. If they're not metabolizing it well, if they're building it up and, you know, a lot of estrogen also, they can have estrogen dominance and mm. even postmenopausally they can have issues with estrogen because um, a lot of estrogen is created from um, adipose tissues. Yes. So, and the higher fat you have, the more the more estrogen will sit in those fat cells as well. Yeah. So, so that's um, that's something that women need to be aware of. But breast cancer, um, pre and post menopausally, is not uncommon. Mm. So yeah, that, that's that's very important. So the first thing we're talking about is to to really get healthy with regards to, you know, getting rid of the body fat. The other thing is cardiovascular health. So mm. exercise is extraordinarily healthy for cardiovascular. It's also an anti carcinogenic yeah. thing you can do. It prevents cancer. And mm. I've, I've got a bit of a bug to bear because it was a story. Someone sent me a, a hate. A, can I give you one of my pet hates? Give it to me. Steve. When someone yeah, sends it? me a link of someone that they I must watch on YouTube because <laughs> they talk health things. Yes. There was a doctor. I don't know if I should mention her name, but maybe, she's, maybe don't mention her name. Yeah, I may mention her name, <laughs> but but she was saying on on this with regards to cancer. She said the number one thing that cancer love is acid, and I went, oh. acid. What are you talking about? Okay. So, so just don't be sucked in by social media because this was an apparent doctor that talked about acid. Mm. Now, I gave you an apple before, didn't you? Mm. Did you eat it? Uh, I haven't eaten it yet, so I'm All pretty right. safe from cancer at the moment. But right. if I eat it, what's going to happen, Steve? Well, what's going to happen is it's going <laughs> to cause sick. acid in your gut mm. and does that give you cancer? Do apples oh, give you cancer? Because yeah. what, what does it break down to? Short-chain fatty what? Acids. Mm. So acids, mm. like butyric acid. All the healthy things we've talked about acid, in previous podcasts. Valerianic acid. Acids mm. are good mm. for you. They are very good for you. Now, when you exercise, you were saying you did deadlifts this morning, you've got sore legs, which is a buildup of lactic what? Acid. Right. Mm. So exercise and apples give you cancer, do they? Mm, it must be. That must be what it is. So, so what yeah. I'm saying is a bit of a bugbear is if you're looking at these people that talk, and this, this was a video on longevity. Mm, okay. Yeah. I mean, so careful because, mm. you know, she just said that uh, number one thing, was it number two was, was sugars, which was correct. Yeah, that is <laughs> correct. She, she, but, she should have put that one at the top. But, but she, she mentioned acid, so don't oversimplify disease. Mm. And, um, you know, we know that when you measure a tumour, it's highly acidic because it's metabolising glucose. I was just going to say, and that's, where, and that's where she might have had the right intention. Yeah. And it's, if you're not aware of a lot of the science behind a lot of these things, you're not going to hear it the way that perhaps she was trying to send it across. So that's, I think, where the lines blur and, and that sort of thing as well. And people can say, 
look at listen to that and go okay it's just acid oh my god i've got to stop eating acidic foods whereas mm. it's more a, an acidity within the body mm. so um that's where people need to be very careful about what they're listening to how they interpret it and also looking at the qualifications of the person that's actually giving the advice or the studies you know linked to studies and things that they're quoting so you know that that um that information is legitimate so. And, and of course, and one of the most anti-carcinogenic vitamins is vitamin C, otherwise known as ascorbic what? Acid. Oh, my, <laughs> oh my God. God. We've had it all wrong oh, all, this, all along, geez. Steve. And, and, you know, this is in fruits and vegetables too. Yes. So it's sort of like you, you just got – it's one of my big bugbears yeah. and it's a friend of mine's brother who just sends me this stuff. And it's like, he just goes, <laughs> and I used to read back saying, this is just wrong. Don't listen to them. But they keep yeah. listening to her uh, and she keeps sending me this stuff. Oh, no. And I don't know how to. No, just. I don't know how to. <laughs> you know, I'm typing mm. on my stupid phone while I'm having a crap on the toilet in the morning <laughs> list, <laughs> listening, listening to this. You just put a picture and everyone says I did not need <laughs> Well, you know, it's like, you know, because yeah, they, they stay up late at night and they send me this stuff. So first thing in the morning, oh, come on, I don't want to deal with this now. Oh, you know, cool. it's, it's, as I'm pooping out the soluble fibres yeah, okay. with all the acids. <laughs> on the short chain fatty acids. Yeah, short sure, yeah, And it's sort of like, come on, do, do you understand that, that acid is, you know, so, so we talked about another podcast, PPI, it's Proton pump inhibitors they're antacids for the stomach mm. they are highly carcinogenic mm-hmm. so yes, you reduce yeah. acid in your stomach you'll get cancer that's right so you can do, don't yes. get sucked into all this stuff no. question everything question everything definitely God. so yes all right so that's so off my chest that's Phew. off your chest so yeah so i mean we are going to talk about ways to well longevity and pathways and things that can help to prolong um extend your your lifespan mm-hmm. um but i mean a lot of this is for people who already are quite healthy and that's yeah. what we wanted to premise let's, let's get into that that bit. um you know, you want to be healthy. You can't just be unhealthy, pre-diabetic or metabolic syndrome or cardiovascular disease from lifestyle um, habits and then do some of the things that we're going to talk about here and expect them to be beneficial. I mean, they, they will to a degree, but get you get everything on track first, get as healthy as you can, yep. and then we look at the, lo- the longevity side of Correct. it and all these amazing things that we can do to help with so that. So you move, move out of disease. Yes. And I always have to teach this. You move, I always have, have a, a long thing I always teach students, and there was a point here of, of ab- sim- ab- or absence of symptoms, mm-hmm. and you had disease mm-hmm. back here, mm-hmm. and you move up the scale towards what we call the wellness scale. Yes. And you and I are sort of in this area because we haven't got this ease chronic disease mm. so so we've got to get people out of this crap first yeah and then you move forward to as you said now what about have you got any data on how long we live and and how's it all going for yeah, us yeah well i've got a little years? bit of data about lifespan and health span yeah good. kind of where we're at all right um so this one was australian new zealand populations mm-hmm. um, more so so uh so life expense expectancy has increased by more than six years between 2000 sorry i keep scratching my nose but there's something it's in my nose so sorry about that people oh, that's, watching <laughs> you, there's lots of fluff you, in the you're really room pretty pepped up at the that moment. might be what it is yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, so, um, so yes, life expectancy has increased by more than six years um, between 2000 and 2019. So that's a fairly fairly big jump. Mm. So it's gone from 66.8 years in the year 2000 to 73.4 years in 2019. It's remarkable. So while healthy life expectancy has also increased from yep. 58.3 to 63.7 in 2019. Um, So the health span has also increased, but this was due to declining mortality rather than reduced years living with disability. So, you know what I mean? So it's sort of a not really an accurate sort of depiction. Um, So basically our lifespan is still 10 years longer than our health span Uh, on average. So mm. we've got 10 years of living with disease on average on average so 10 years is a long time it's a long time, time. A if you're living with a chronic disease or maybe a lot of pain a lot of um you know being uh not being able to move around mm. how are you going to have any quality of life so the whole idea is to try to pull that um that health span out to the end of your life so yep. that you can i mean my goal was always to be able to squat and deadlift till I could die. So, and as long as I could, as soon as I couldn't do that anymore, I might done. So <laughs> you, you can't squat anymore. Oh, I can't either. <laughs> temporarily, Steve. Temporarily. Temporarily. Yeah, you know, got a bad knee. But um, but yeah. But uh, the thing is to be able to to be able to get up yourself and get up off a chair yep. yourself and walk around and yep. you know that's kind of the goal to be able to be mobile and not have to have someone to look after you. Yeah. So that's I think everyone's goal. Absolutely, and live on a handful of drugs. Yeah. God, I was at the pharmacy the other day, and you know, this lady walked out, 
and, and she had a rubber band around all her drugs. Oh, yeah, no, oh, she was scary. she was probably ten years old than me, so she was yeah. about sixty four or something. Yeah. Um, and, and it's like, oh, I mean, ten years, I don't want to be anywhere like that. And mm. I know, I know, she had Crestor, it's an anti cholesterol drug. Mm. She had pro- propanol, which is an anti hypertensive. So she had all these lifestyle diseases. Yeah. She was obese, mm. um, and she also had some um, opioids in there, mm. so painkillers. I mean, and it's a pretty standard progression, isn't it? Like mm. polypharmacy. So you get one. One medication, and then that, then you may end up with um, side effects. So then you get another medication. And I know someone very close to me who's been put on um, certain drugs, and then they've caused issues within other systems in their body, and yep. they're up to like fourteen drugs now. A fourteen, and, the, and it's the drugs that are going to kill, you know, kill them rather oh, than yeah. to keep them alive in that instant. So, yeah. and that's very common. I mean, I see it in clinic polypharmacy with older people where they're just on multiple medications. Yeah. Um, and, and a lot of it can be prevented by lifestyle. Well, prevented. So, so what is wrong with the modern world, though? What, what do we uh, Yeah, so what is wrong with the modern yeah, world? So, what... so when we're talking about health, lifespan, that sort of thing, our body has something called hormesis. It does something called hormesis. Yeah. So hormesis is basically whatever doesn't kill Should you makes you stronger. stronger. Yeah. So a little bit of, it's like what you said the other day, a little bit of poison can actually be good. A lot of poison will kill you. Mm. So it's the same with stressors on our body. So having a little, having some stress on our body is actually very good for yeah. our health long term. So um, things like um, food restriction, going hungry for a little while, yep. exercise is a stressor on the body, extreme heat, extreme cold. Those types of things are actually very good for our longevity um, in small doses. So acute amounts of these yeah. sort of stressors. But the problem with the modern world is we don't really have any of those stressors anymore. Like, you know, first and second world countries, third world countries, a little bit different, obviously. Yeah. Um, we don't go without food no. for very long. You know, some people more than three hours and they just think their throat's cut, but oh, they shit, haven't had anything me. to eat. <laughs> <laughs> um, we don't, you know, we, we have lived in, we live in um, climate controlled environments. So we've got air conditioning in, in buildings and we've got heating. So yeah. we're never really putting ourselves, our bodies into a lot of, a lot of these sort of um, hormetic stresses mm. that we, that are actually good for us. So that in itself can be a little bit of a problem. We're not <clears> getting those, those um, things, those pathways activated that actually are longevity pathways. So... Uh- Amazing, isn't it? And yeah. you're right, because, you know, I spoke to a, an, another lady who works here, I won't mention her name, but she's saying, oh, it's a little bit cold in here today, isn't it? It's like, slightly, but... It's a little bit cold, it's not, really. It's not, not, not we're, we're sleeping out in a cave like we used to for hundreds of thousands of That's years. That's right. You know, when we were hunting and gathering and all that sort of crap. Yeah, or, you know, I mean, like me at home, so I'm just a bit hot, I need the air conditioner on, so, you know, a little bit... And you, got, you can adjust it to 20... That's right. Four, 24. 24.5 and yeah, yeah, that's right. Oh, I do that too. I'm not saying I sit there and tough it out in the sun. No, I, but but what we are and what we are yeah. going to say is that a little bit of this, doing a little bit of this along the way, actually is going to be beneficial for you. And people try and avoid this 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 uncomfortableness. Mm. They, they do everything to avoid it. Mm. Like if they're hungry, they'll eat. Yes. If they're you know, doing anything, slight temperature changes, they'll adjust the temperature mm. uh, just because it's a first world thing. Yeah. You know, and if you've got a slight headache, you'll take, you know, paracetamol mm. or, or something like that. So you always try and get yourself out of discomfort and That's disease. Right. And yeah. you're saying a little bit of this, a little bit of stress in the body. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, like this morning I went for, I had to start work early, but I, I still went for an early morning run and got up at four o'clock. Mm. Stressed my body out yeah. first thing in the morning. I, yeah. I ran up a hill and ran, you know, just in 20 minutes, but I sprinted. Mm. So, and that's good for an old man, but... It is good for an old man. It's impressive. Thanks so, yeah. for calling me an old man. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> no, you said it, but yeah, so I, know, I, am, I am an old man. Come <laughs> on, David. No, but but, but we've got these things, uh, and a lot of people lack the energy to, to do these sort of things. And we've got these things in our, our cells called the mitochondria. Yeah. And that's at the heart of aging and inflammation. Do you want to tell yes. us a little bit about mitochondria? and what yeah. that held and what they do. What they are. So mm. mitochondria, so they're little organelles that are in our cells. Mm-hmm. And, and there is a lot of mitochondria through every cell in our body. Mm-hmm. I think the only place that we don't have mitochondria is red blood cells. Yeah, they don't have one. Mm. Um, so, and these basically are our little energy centers. These mm-hmm. are, what, are what create our ATP, yep. um, our energy. So we need to have really healthy mitochondria. And as we age, we actually do lose mitochondria. So um, the less mitochondria we have, obviously the less energy we're going to produce, all of that sort of thing. So that's kind of why we tend to start to slow down as we get older. But um, there is a lot of things that can actually impact our mitochondria. And a lot of people have unhealthy mitochondria. They're losing mitochondria from lifestyle um, mm-hmm. sort of factors and things like that. So, um, so we need to 
have healthy mitochondria to make ATP because we can't store ATP, yeah. our energy, basically. So it has to be turned over continually. So the mitochondria are getting used a lot mm -hmm. um, and we're turning them over a lot. So we need to keep them as healthy as we can. So um, avoiding things, you know, such as toxins and nutrient deficiencies um, in stressors as well. So chronic stress. So we, mm. there's a difference between acute stress and chronic stress. So when we're talking about hormesis, that's sort of your acute short-term um, stress you in your out. It's like inflammation. So mm. we're going to talk about inflammation. Yeah. Um, acute inflammation isn't bad. It's actually good. Mm. It's when it becomes chronic that mm. we start to have a lot of issues. So um, so we need to have, yeah, so back to, to um, mitochondria. We need to have really healthy mitochondria. Um, so I've got some really good stats on all of this, but, yeah, so what were you going to say, Steve? Well, I was going to say that, I mean, the ways to damage your mitochondria are, are left right. So let's start with yeah. a few drugs. Can yeah. you think of any medications that people commonly take, and I mean commonly, yeah. to, to damage your mitochondria? Yeah, so the two that I would say people take quite often are antibiotics and aspirin. Aspirin. Aspirin's are really common. And antibiotics. I mean, how often yep. do people do antibiotics? And, and they can paracetamol. Be really, yep. Very damaging to the mitochondria. Yeah. Oh, and cocaine, damn. Cocaine, I know. That's on the list. So sorry for the taste, cocaine. Jeez, now I know. I've got to write that down. <laughs> Crap. I had to throw that in for your sake, Steve. Just Thanks, to let, yeah, you know. just to let me know. Drop me. <laughs> and in, in, in the medicine, that's a common anti-gout anti drug. Now, yep. here's the weird thing. It, it's an anti-inflammatory, but it's also a potent anti-gout drug, which yeah. is really good for gout. Mm. But... You got to remember the gout person is usually the middle-aged fat man mm. with the big swollen toe who's like doesn't exercise anyway. So mm. they're going to destroy their mitochondria, so they never feel like going to the gym That's right. ever again, yeah. or going for a walk for that matter. That's right. And their toes in pain. <laughs> <laughs> Methamphetamine. That's Methamphetamine. A good one. Yeah. Um, Levodopa, which is a drug for your brain. Um, well, it's an amino yeah. acid. It's found in yeah. beans. It's a natural thing. But if you take it as a drug, it's good for um, Parkinson's disease. Mm. And NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. And, and look at the last one, Steve. Jeez. Statins. Can't stand statins. Statins. And what does statin <clears throat> deplete? CoQ10. CoQ10. We talked about that yep. in the past. CoQ10, very important nutrient for um, mitochondrial function. Yep. So that's why a lot of people, when they're on statins, they can get um, muscle pain and aches and things like that. They're not getting that, that mitochondrial energy production that they need. So, um, so yeah, so alcohol is another one that can damage it. Oh, um, and alcohol I, and cocaine. Alcohol and cocaine, so yeah, that, that's your hat, Steve. You're out here. You see, goes my set, don't I? <laughs> yeah, no, it's I'm going to get emails about this, aren't I? Yeah, I totally. I know, yeah, yeah. But no. but look, this is all bad news because everybody takes those drugs all the time. Aspirin, yeah. I mean, it's possible. Even Panadol, the most common, probably the most common drug taken. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing, isn't it? Yeah. So, so um, you know, you, you can really damage our mitochondria. And mm. mitochondria, without functioning mitochondria, you just got no energy or, or no. anything like that. Yeah. Well, I've got a little bit of a cool little thing here that will yeah, might, might give you a cool little bit thing. of a picture of mitochondria. Mm. Um, so, obviously, we need mitochondria produces energy yep. and then red, um, red blood cell um, production. So, we need... Good red blood, uh, good um, sorry, blood vessels to carry mm -hmm. around our our blood, so we can mm -hmm. get our oxygen, so oxygenate our body very well. Yep. Um, so, uh, so oh, well, I will say mitochondrial reactive oxygen leakage mm -hmm. is a strong predictor um, for longevity across all species. So um, that so having issues with. Uh, <laughs> oxygen leakage yep. out of your mitochondria can definitely impact your longevity. Mm. Um, so and it's a free radical oxidizer. It? it is, it's, yeah. It's a, yeah. So oxygen, it's essential for energy production, mm -hmm. um, but it can become dangerous when it's not totally controlled. So l listen to this for some stats, Steve. Give so it at to me. rest, yep. the body uses one kilo of oxygen per day. That's oh, at rest. One kilogram of oxygen. Yeah, that's that's a fair bit of oxygen, really. You think how light oxygen is, right? Well, it's still, you know, about 18 to 90 percent of the oxygen in the atmosphere is oxygen. Yeah. Most of it's nitrogen. Yeah. And you've got trace gases like helium and argon. Um, yeah, so we, we use 1%, uh, one, gram, 1 kilogram per day. But during maximal exercise, it can, it can increase to up to 10 to 20 grams per minute All right. of oxygen. Yep. So say you're doing an hour of exercise. Yep. So that's a hell of a lot. Mm -hmm. um, 1% to 2% of oxygen is lost in normal mitochondrial function. Leakage, yeah. Yeah, leakage. Um, so, and then, uh, yeah, and then 200 milligrams, yeah, Oh, what up? Now I'm lost. So 10 to 20 grams of O2 lost per day at rest and 200 milligrams per minute at maximal exercise. Sorry, so 200 milligrams of oxygen per minute 
is used wow. at, at um, maximal exercise. Right. So that can create a lot of oxidative stress. Mm. Um, so that can sort of explain why as we get older, obviously we're exercising and then life and that sort of thing. Um, creates a lot of oxidative stress, um, mitochondrial DNA damage. Yep. And then over the years, it, we start to slow down. Mm-hmm. So energy, uh, oxygen production decreases and all that sort of thing. So people in their mid-50s, sorry, Steve-O, I think you're probably exempt from this. Mm, probably not. Um, that's when you see them start to slow down and get a little yeah. bit tired and, you know, not have as much energy. And that's because their mitochondrial function is, is not what it was. There's a lot of damage over the years. Oxidative stress is coming from that. So... Um, looking after our mitochondria is really important. Mm. You're right, and and I'm too old not to. I mean, when yeah. I was 16, 18, you can get get away with anything. Yeah. You know, you can eat crap and live like crap and stay up all night. Mm. In the early days of the, when I used to play music, it was very, very common for me not to sleep at night. Mm. Not only because I couldn't sleep, just because I was out playing all night. Yeah. Yeah, I never was an out all night. I don't think I've ever done all nighters. Some was a nerd. Oh, the, never, the, the worst I've done was when I was on tour with the band and we did two nights straight. Wow. And, and that was like, we, we, it was New Year's Eve. And then we had like the next day that the, everyone was hanging around. But, you know, it was like a big festival thing. Yeah. And so we did what was called a re- recovery session, which was a <laughs> five till 10 gig in the afternoon the next day, just all acoustic, all weird stuff. Anyway, everyone just kicked on. And the publican where who was selling all the beer, they just kept drinking. So they said, you know, can we keep playing? Just paid us more money to keep playing. Yeah. And they said, we'll tell you when to stop. And it just went all night and the next night. Oh, God, no. So, no oh, jeez. Think of that. So you wouldn't be able to do that now. Well, and your mitochondria wouldn't like that either. No, nah, it wasn't good. You know, it was like, you know, it was, you, I felt awful after that. Yeah. Um, but, but, you know, like nowadays, I, I'm lucky to make it to 9 o'clock at night. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm just kind of a 9, 10 at night person. Oh, I'm more we like, were, I, early I, I, was, I was exaggerating when I said 9. I'm just sort of like <laughs> 8, 9. <laughs> okay. Jeez. Yeah, I'm usually 9, but we, we get up early. My wife, there. 7.30 to 8. Does she? Oh, she's the, well, she's worst the worst of the worst. Although yeah. she got up three thirty this morning, she was up before me. Oh gee. She had a. She was she was just going to work snorting ketamine up people's noses today. <laughs> cool. No, not her, her nose. She is it's a people's. registered nurse. She's yes, in the yes. hospital, but she's snorting ketamine up people's noses. <laughs> Great. Okay, so, I'd like to be in your household anyway. So oh we're yeah, she smuggles some home. For, no, she yeah. doesn't. She <laughs> well, doesn't. This is getting worse and worse. It's getting worse. What's it? So all right. So you get this mitochondrial. So mitochondrial. So that can be um that. That can definitely be a, a significant um, implication in our longevity and, and, and that sort of thing. So we want to make sure we're looking after our mitochondria. Well, how so do we do that? Some things that we can do for our yep. mitochondria, obviously live a healthy lifestyle, exercise, which yep. we will yep. talk about at Good. the end. Got it, got it. Um, exercise creates new mitochondria. Yes, it does. Yeah, so, we, so we'll so we talk more about that when we get to exercise. CoQ10, as I touched mm. on before, very important for mitochondrial function. And which form? Um, uh, ubiquinol. The ubiquinol. Yep. Think of alcohol is really good for you. That's what yep. I teach my students. Not ubiquinone. Yes, no, not ubiquinol. So ubiquinol is the active form. Yep. It's very easy. Um, carries electrons through the electron transport chain. Yeah. So, um, and protects against oxidative damage. So nice. it's really good. CoQ10. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, we it's depleted as we get older, and if you're on statins, definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, alpha lipoic acid and acetyl alcarnitine, mm. really good for uh, mitochondrial production. So yeah. that's something I'll give a lot to people who have mitochondrial good, issues. Eh? Yeah, so they're and very easy to get hold of. Resveratrol. Oh, We're going to talk about resveratrol a, a lot. Today. It's you're pretty hear... much this, the one running through, theme through all of this yep. resveratrol. Um, it increases mitochondrial production, protects against um, re- reaction oxidative, uh, reactive oxygen species, mm-hmm. and it regulate, uh, regulates CERT1, which we're going to talk about as well, the CERT2 and genes. We're going to talk about that coming up. Yeah. Glutathione. You love that one. I love glutathione. I yeah. do too. It's, yeah. it, well, it's the number one antioxidant in the body. Yeah, it's amazing antioxidant yeah. and depleted so easily. So, yeah. you know, the lifestyle and oxidative stress, as the mitochondria was talking about, glutathione would de- be depleted. So mm. restoring your glutathione level is very important for the um, mitochondrial function. And vitamin E um, protects from oxidative stress as well. So there are some mm. things you can do to help with your... Yeah, I mean, I, w- I would love to get a jar of those nutrients. I know. <laughs> Down the way. Because that's just good for everybody. You can. That's you, can really good. you can get some really good mitochondria. Um, complexes actually that have got a lot of these good things mm. in them. So, um, so that's something you really want to look at. So, if we're looking at longevity, that's one thing. Make sure your mitochondria are yep. healthy and functioning. And you well. got energy, and you got energy then to go to the gym, and build rock rock hard muscles like you and I. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, you. <laughs> no, I was uh, just waiting for you to say what you were wondering no, what going to say next. But yes. Well, we, well, we want to do that. Now, now there, there are little enzymes that we're going to talk about that grow rippling muscles like mine. Yes. And um, it's called mammalian target of raptomycin That's complex. Right. Can we just call it mTOR, mTOR for today? mTOR for short. A yeah. good mTOR. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so what's this mTOR stuff and, and what, what's it all about? Yeah, so mTOR. Uh, mTOR? <laughs> It's a lolly, isn't it? Mentos. 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 Yeah, that's dyslexia. I said it back the front. Um, it's it promotes cell survival through ah. upregulation of protein lipid synthesis, um, which boosts cellular metabolism. So mm. mTOR is activated when we have nutrient intake, so eating basically, yes. and protein specifically. It's, yep. It works on that. So we've talked about M- mTOR. You, I'm sure you guys have yeah, talked about have mTOR a, a lot in a lot of podcasts. Yep. Really good. So it coordinates cell growth. Um, when we have a lot of nutrient abundance. So yep. that's when we're getting all those amino acids and all those good things in. So very good for growing, basically. Yeah. It's a growth sort of a, um, activator, yeah, basically. Yeah, it, it is a good thing. Yeah. And you've got the the, the, the yin of the yang, which is AMPK. Yeah, AMPK. So what, adenosine monophosphate activated protein kinase. That's it. So AMPK. So AMPK is kind of the other end of the seesaw. Yep. It's kind of from mTOR. So mTOR... What we want to do if we want to have longevity is we don't want to be activating mTOR all the time. No. So, you know, people are constantly eating. So mm. Every two hours, three hours, I need to eat, I need to eat. They're not allowing um, – they're continually activating this pathway, mm. which is the growth pathway, yeah. which in – can be good for some things, but it can also be bad. Uh, it, so due to mTOR having an active role in activation of genes related to cell growth, mm-hmm. any def- defects within the mTOR um, – Function can lead to cancer development. Yeah, so too much cancers in- and all that yeah. sort of stuff. That's why when people say, you know, they're, they're eating, you know, 12 meals a day or 10 yeah. meals. The one guy that I, I, well, I sort of follow, he's passed away a few, about five years ago, but he was the most extreme bodybuilder. And it's just fascinating what he's doing. You know, when mm. people do extreme stuff that yeah. may not be um, conducive for their health. <laughs> yeah. And he did pass away in his late 40s. Mm. Uh, uh, rich uh, piano or something and he's mm-hmm. a really muscly guy and he was just like all focused on this and he said eat 10 12 meals a day loads of food mm. do all the steroids open about it mm. just the most extreme guy but had the massivest you know, just massive muscles yeah um really fascinating unfortunately he passed away mm. due to a a large, you know, just just the abuse on the body, just too yeah, much of too this. Much, yeah. Too much, way too much. And yeah. that's where it can come in. And I have seen some studies, and, and hopefully bodybuilders won't shoot me down for this, but that bodybuilders live about an average 12 years less. Oh, you're getting emails about that? I will get emails about that. But, um, but you're a body sculptor. Body sculptor, yes. Yeah. Not a bodybuilder. But I never did that. Oh, look, oh, back... I was back in the day of every three hours, eat every three hours to stop muscle, you know, breakdown, which is quite funny in hindsight when you think about it, isn't it? Um, And things have definitely changed. I mean, I now, I do time-restricted eating now, um, but, which we'll talk about. um, But, yes, I think the days of eating every three hours, even for bodybuilders, has changed a lot. Mm. I think we've realised that that's not the thing. So we don't want to be Mm. activating our mTOR Continually, pathways continually. Yeah, this is this is a, a longevity talk. We're not, we're not talking about how to build massive yeah. muscles all the time. Yeah. So, so you want muscle, but you don't want massive. You muscle. don't want massive. And look, if you want to build big muscles, then you're activating that pathway. Th- then that's fine. It depends. As long as you know. Yeah, so, as long as you know. So mm. we're talking about longevity rather than aesthetically looking a certain way. Yeah. Um, and we and it's not about mm. stopping all that. We, we want to get, like I said, the balance. Yeah. So what we want to do is we want to have we want to a- uh, activate the AMP K. Um, pathway as well and what that does is that sort of is the counter to mTOR so when mTOR is actually causing um, growth and um, proliferation and that sort of thing uh, uh, MK is sort of all about repair yeah so it's going in and repairing so you want to have a bit of growth and then you want to have a bit of repair so you want to kind of balance the two out so MK is very um, very important pathway to activate very good for um, our metabolic function yep um, so, well, you, this all sounds great, but how do you activate it? Oh, we've got plenty of ways we can activate. Well, fasting is a really easy way to activate. So doing nothing. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Pretty much doing nothing, yeah. Don't eat. Yeah. Now, that, yeah. that, that's kind of like fasting is, is a bit more than just not eating. It's yeah. not eating for a period of time. Yeah. You say 24 hours. That's a big fast. Yeah, so I, I think I said it in now. Part one of the anti-aging is I look at this fasting and time-restricted eating. So anyone says I'm a, I fast for 
12, 14 hours a day, that's kind of more time restricted eating yeah. than fasting. So fasting, I I would say anything over 24 hours. Wow. So other than that, time restricted eating. And time restricted eating is a very good way to activate AMK. So wow. even as little as 12 hour, a 12 hour fast, which is very easy for most people to do, eat your dinner and then go to bed and get up in the morning. And Yeah, is that say like from 6 to 6 or 7? Yeah, that's or pretty seven. easy to do. Oh, so yeah. So most people should be able to do that. If you can't do that, then I would say there's, a, there's some issues with um, some metabolic flexibility there. You can't do it. You could also suck it up, princess, and do it. Exactly, yeah. You know, it's sort of like, you know, you won't die, I promise. Yeah. I, I mean, promise. I have had clients that say, I can't, I get the shakes, I get all this. And that's because they've got very significant yeah. blood sugar dysregulation. Um, they need to kind of get themselves more fat adapted so they can utilise their fat stores and that yeah. sort of thing. But activating AMP-K will um, definitely help your uh, metabolic function, uptake sugars. So what happens is it... it reads a signal from your mitochondria saying, well, we don't have any ATP, we don't have any energy. Yeah. So AMPK will then be switched on and that will then bring in sugars, taking your sugars and then utilise them for energy. So it's mm. replacing the energy that you're not getting from the food and, and that type of thing. So um, very, very good for longevity. So everyone, I mean, the fasting and time-restricted eating is all the thing, isn't it, at the moment? Yeah. So um, it has a lot of really good benefits. So how does it help with anti-ageing? Um, so, yeah, all right. yeah, we've got loads of little ways that it helps here. All right, you've got we've got loads of ways of how it helps. Yeah, um, but yeah, go, go through those ways how it helps. Then yeah. I, I, I want to ping you with supplements. What supplements I can right. take? Because yeah. you talked to me about my exercise and fasting. Yeah, <laughs> let's say I'm not a fan. I am a fan. Yeah, because you have to do that. But we've also got to think. But but the, what, yeah, there's ways we can you? hack it a little bit. Yeah, a little we'll bit hack of it a little biohacking bit. going on. Yeah. Um, obviously inhibiting mTOR as we said. So the fasting. Yeah. Um, so fasting, as I said, it also promotes auto autophagy yep so autophagy is when your body goes in and cleans up cleans all the up cells all the and that sort of stuff yeah. regenerates so your cells turns them over so basically it's kind of like goes in and does a bit of a clean up of everything mm. like you know, run running your car through the car wash type nice. thing cleans up everything yep um so that's another way that it helps with your longevity it generates your mitochondrial mitochondria so new yep. mitochondria as well um and it regulates glucose as well so it impacts glucose uptake breakdown and synthesis mm -hmm. Um, so there's some of the ways that it actually contributes to that anti-aging um, and longevity type impact. Amazing. Yeah, so now so you want to know how it. do we do oh, it? I want supplements What now. do we do oh, other well, than I'm fasting? I'm exercising, I'm fasting. What you're else fasting, can I do? fasting, you're exercising. Well, resveratrol, Steve. Oh, you sound like a broken record. I oh, know. Get yeah, used to it. Yep. Get used to it. Yeah, so it activates AMPK in yep. uh, fat, liver, and muscle tissue. Whew, that's what we yeah, want. Spirit. Um, sorry, no, that's crocetin. That's the next one. So it activates AMK through inhibition of complex 1, Three and five of yep. the respiratory, respiratory trains, yeah, amazing. kind of on a whole other thing. Yep. So resveratrol, quercetin is the next one. So yep. that activates um, activates the AMK. Um, I love quercetin. I use yeah. quercetin for so many things. Um, it's very good anti-inflammatory. Anti it's very good for mast cell, act you know, mast mm. cell um, activation and syndrome and all that sort of thing. Antiviral, yep. Um, ECGC. Epic Gallico catching Gallate. Is that what you're looking for? That's what I'm nerdy word I looked at me. you. I can never say that word. God, Found I get in a green bad tea. Rep coming to these things. Oh, who's that nerd you were talking about? <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know what he's doing. I just look at Steve. He knows oh. what he knows. When I look at him, he can say the long word. Um, but it's found in green tea. You know, they say green tea is fat burning. Well, yeah. it activates AMP cave. That's yeah, why. That's how it works. Yeah, that's how it works. Um, berberine. We just oh. did a podcast on berberine. Love, love to drink it. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Berberine's great. Um, and I think we mentioned in the great berberine if you want podcast, to throw up. it's good. For, yeah, it's good for people who are fasting. Yeah to extend their fast, but it does activate AMPK. Um, caution, long-term use, listen to the podcast yeah. if you're a little bit unsure about berberine. Mm. Um, uh, palmitol ethylalanamide, I love this. Yeah, I love this P PEA. I'm doing some research on this at the moment. It does so much more than pain, than oh, pain yeah. management. It's very, very good, but it also activates AMPK apparently. So that's something I'm looking into more because I, I think this that. is going to be the new supplement of the moment coming out. Keep, yeah. Keep, um, yeah. I'll tell you a story. A, a doctor recommended that to my mother-in-law. Really? That's yeah, a forward-thinking doctor. I went, mm, post-surgery. Yeah, wow. Pain. Wow. Amazing, eh? That is amazing. I it's went, very good for pain, very good for fibromyalgia. She goes, what's pee? And I'm going, what are you talking and so she sent me, and, and oh, it's PEA. Yeah, PEA, amazing. Anti-inflammatory, yep. um, antihistamine, mm. great for nervous system function, brain health, so many things. So it's good. It's found watch in this um, space egg, egg yolks. Yeah, um, uh, yes, it is. It's amazing. Um, astragalus. Oh, I love astragalus. So good Very for good for anti-aging. Yeah. The astragalus, yeah. Um, olive oil can actually <laughs> activate AMK too, believe it or not. Because of the polyphenols, yeah. Yeah. Fish oil. Oh. Creatine. Yeah. 
CoQ10. Again. Apple cider vinegar. Oh. Uh, you know, there's apple cider vinegar with the fat. I'll tell you a little anecdotal story I did. Go for I, it. Years ago now, I just started adding apple cider vinegar. I did not change a thing. I was quite lean at the time, but I lost seven kilos just with apple cider vinegar in That's the case of two months without cider, doing anything different. Yeah, because the, the acetic acid has yep, a great acid. regulatory role in apple cider. Yeah, it's amazing. so apple cider vinegar is great. I tell pretty much most of my clients, because it helps with digestion. I've got a digestion podcast coming out. We'll talk a little yeah. bit about that. Yeah. But, um, but I've it's probably come out by now. No, I don't think it has come out yet. We'll have by the time <laughs> this comes out. I forgot. <laughs> We're coming back in time. Uh, um, yeah, so apple cider vinegar, and how easy is that? So Acidic these are acid. little hacks you can do. So mm. if you can't fast for 16 hours, um, then try bringing in some of these things, and that can help a little bit with these types of things. So oh. acidic acid's also in vinegar. Yeah, in vinegars, yeah. So really so good. So put vinegar on your fish and chips when you're eating it at dinner tonight. That's right. No. <laughs> yeah, that's like you, having a salad. Yeah, yeah, that's how people read this. Yeah. They, they, there's, there's someone out there that would have thought that. Yeah, well, that's true. But well, you can't do that. You can't. You can't no, really bypass. Just talking to the people, you can't <laughs> bypass it that much. You still got to do that. But but I would look at time restricted eating is really a really amazing for so many uh, benefits, as we said. Mm. And, you know, the anti aging in itself. But start with twelve hours. Yeah. And then creep it up. So, and let me premise, men, no worries, you can do it because <laughs> men can do anything. Well, we can't without any major concerns. We women whinge. a little bit different. So cycling women, you've got to be a little bit more careful yeah. with your time restricted eating um around your cycles and energy and all that sort of stuff because um calorie restriction can um suppress your uh, progesterone production Mm. so you want to be a little bit careful about that some women are sensitive and if you have high stress as a woman as well not so good to do your fasting but you Mm. could do a 12 hour fast so that's quite safe yeah um but i'd probably stick to 12 13 hours but you know i'd say go otherwise if everything's great and um everything's balanced go up to 16 hour fast is quite good Jeez. And that's not super hard to do. No. So um, I've actually, since I started researching this, gone back to doing the 16-hour fast. And I oh, forgot, I forgot it used to be so much easier than yeah. it is now. It's I hard. use an app just because it keeps me on track. But um, really? I don't do it every day. What um, does, it, does it say? Not now, don't eat it now, just says stop fa- eating. No, it's just a fasting clock. So you you press it when you start your fast and then you press it to finish your fast and you get stars if you get on your full, and, um, your full fast. And all. But it I like, because I'm a tracker, to... I like to track yeah. and I like to see that clock counting down. So I'm like, oh, I've got two and a half hours left. If I see the visual, I'll do it. Whereas if I just don't, if I'm just in my head, I'm like, ah, oh, no, I'll just eat that. It's fine. So, Jeez, but I don't do 16 hour fast every day, but I'll do it. I'll do a 14 hour fast standard. <sighs> yeah. So fasting. Oh. So that's great. Time restricted eating is amazing. But all those other um, supplements um, that we talked about, yeah. they're great to add in because they can definitely Im- increase that um, AMK pr- um, activity. So we've talked about mTOR, talked AMK. About MTOR. Yep. What about NRF2? NRF2. Now what... Yeah, what's that big word? You can say the big uh, word. Nuclear factor, euthyroid, two related factor. That's it? <laughs> NRF2. Or NRF2. NRF2. Now, Even. NRF2, is, is this a goodie or a baddie? So, NRF2 is a really goodie. So, yeah. NRF2 gets switched on when we have high levels of oxidative stress. Mm. So, it comes in and cleans everything up, basically. It's a sort of detoxifier and all yeah. that sort of thing. So, we want to have um, good activation of our NRF2 pathways. Um, so, yeah, so octiva- ox- oxidative stress, as yep. we talked about, environmental toxins, mm. um, stressors, pollution, UV light exposure, aging itself mm-hmm. can create oxidative stress. Yep. So when this um, sort of registers that oxidative stress level getting too high, it comes in, cleans up all your free radicals. Mm. Um, so that's a very... These herbs that boost it up, we'll talk about that in a sec. Yeah. But, but isn't it an incredible agent? And, and this, unfortunately, this stuff declines as we age. It does. It all so starts we, So to we need out. to keep it going. That's what we should. These little things, we want to kind of boost these little pathways up all the time because they do decline when we age and that's where the ageing sort of process is, is happening. So we mm. want to try and shift these pathways and ramp them back up again. All right. So we want to make sure we've got um, good NRF2 activations. Well, tell us how to activate it. Wow. Well, Don't leave us hanging. What do you think What do you think would be one of them, Steve? Oh, jeez. It's going to be quercetin, isn't it? It's going to be quercetin and resveratrol. <laughs> yeah. They're the two standards. They're the two, uh, they're the two phases. Are you sure you're not just cutting and pasting from I know, your I last I could have, yes. No. Though. These are amazing. So resveratrol, yeah. quercetin, very good um, NRF2 activators. Yep. Olin. Yep. Some Mary's thistle. Um, I love some Mary's thistle. Yeah, milk thistle. Amazing. Silly bum around them for yeah, the out there. Love it. Um, curcumin. Yep. Really good as well. Turmeric. Yep. ECGC again. Yep. 
Yeah, and um, some soft orophanes, so from broccoli, broccoli sprout, sprouts, really that's good. It. Broccoli sprout, amazing, amazing, amazing. I use it for a lot of things. Good for gut health, good for detox, good for estrogen detox, good yeah. for antioxidant status, really good. So there's some things you can add in as NRF2 activators and to help boost that pathway. Don't forget, it's in season right now, broccoli. It in is October. in season, yeah. So gorge on the stuff while mm. it's in season. Yeah. That's what we do. Yep. Yeah, and if you have issues with thyroid, don't be worried about you know, the whole um, you can't eat cruciferous vegetables if you have a thyroid issue. That, yep. that used to be the thing. You can just got to lightly cook it, yep. and you're not going to be eating enough that's going to create such a, a big issue unless you're eating bowls and bowls of it every day. Yeah. So not so as long as you're lightly cooking it, lightly steaming it, you can have your broccoli, Absolutely. and it's very good for all those things. So wow. so yeah, bro- broccoli is amazing, but broccoli sprouts very concentrated. Mm. Um, and the broccoli sprout doesn't have any goitrogen in it. Yeah. So, so, so that's a really thyroid good one problem, as well. Yeah, thyroid problems. Amazing. So, wow. so yeah, so, so, so activate your NRF2 pathway as well yeah. to clean up that oxidative stress is another one. Now, so, we're, we're, not, we're not done with the three-letter acronyms, are we? <laughs> no, <nah>, there's more. <laughs> What's NAD, H or NAD, NAD Well, the NAD plus is amazing. So this is... Um, what, this what's is, the long word for it? Oh, so nicotinamide oh. adenine dinucleotide. That's it. NAD plus. So that... Plus is the hydrogen, by the way, you yes. see, and it's a plus. It's yeah. a plus, yeah. Acid. So this it's is, an acid. It is an acid. Because plus, a uh, plus thing is a proton, which is an acid. Yeah. So this is an acid. So this will give you cancer, right? Well, apparently so. Oh, this, yeah, no. I'm so. picking on that doctor. No. So NAD, this is like one of the anti-aging supplements of the, yep. that's been around. It's a this very, very good. good shit. Such good, su- such yeah. good NAD. So um, so it's present in every cell yep. in the body. It's criti- critical for DNA repair. Yep. Um, cellular um, production and gene expression. Yeah. So it's a really good one. So, and these naturally, NAD levels naturally decline like everything else as we get older so i've got bugger all bugger all steve so you so might have to take age. some uh, something that we're going to talk about so um yeah so we want to make sure we have really good levels of nad and some amazing things can happen when we up our nad levels oh, in our body geez, which we'll talk about because <laughs> mine's, mine's going to be low at my age what, what 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 are we what are we what are we boosting here so the way to boost nad so we can't just take nad because it's quite unstable and your, yeah. your um, gut will break it down mm. so we can't just take nad but we can take um nicotinamide riboside yep or we can take um, nicotinamide mononucleotide, so NMN, really hard to say fast. Um, so that's NMM. N-N-N-N-N. Oh. So I can't say it fast. Do it again. NMM? NMM. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> there you go. Um, so nicotinamide mononucleotide is NMN. Yep. Um, but in Australia, it's a lot, little bit harder to get. Yeah. So we use nicotinamide riboside. Yep. So basically B3, so nice and converts to nicotinamide riboside. Then that converts to um, nicotinamide mononucleotide, yep. which then is converted to NAD in the body. Yep. So obviously the less conversion less um, sort of pathways we have to go down to get to NAD the better so yep. NMN is great but N, um, NR <laughs> it's like it's so difficult with all these um, oh yeah acronyms. The acronyms so crazy. nicotinamide riboside very good as well to have and that will um, directly boost your NAD levels mm. um, so um, I know you've got a personal story I've got a personal this. story because I was checking out your legs before yeah <laughs> and that sounds very weird but not for the reason that you would think no that no, is weird <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> no, there's there's a story. There's, there's a story. A story. I, I, I was you you were showing me your legs actually before. I was showing you my legs. Just, yeah, you know, yeah, I was showing my ankles me. actually. My and, ankles. and I'm saying, look, I'm married, Nick. I'm, I'm, <laughs> no, I was that. Yeah, no. no, 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 it was nothing no, like that. Why, why no, were you we showing, showing me your legs? Ankles. What was going on? Well, I um. So let me go back. Let me backtrack here. For, <laughs> so we're talking about nicotinamide riboside or uh, um, nicotinamide mononucleotide. Yep. For, and all the benefits that I'm going to tell you of what it, the role of NAD does. But before we get to that, there has been a lot of anecdotal reports of NA, um, NR, nicotinamide yeah. riboside or NMN, actually working on female hormones. Oh. So women who perhaps aren't cycling anymore um, have started, started cycling again. Ah. Um, so I, I like to play around with things, Steve. I like to experiment. And generally when we do research on things, I'll go out and experiment with the things we're going to... Because, you know, you've oh, got to I'm know what's going to happen. I'm and, the biggest experimenter on, well, on I mean, Earth. If we're going to give things to our clients, yeah. we need to kind of know what's what's the deal and what if they work and all that sort of thing. And there's of different course. forms and what's right yeah. what's not. But I, I um, was taking... I've been taking resveratrol and um, nicotinamide riboside. And I've been taking for a little while, but I upped my doses. Ah. Um, and... Oh, I don't know, full disclosure, hormonally, I'm nearly 50, so they're declining, yeah. let's say. 
Um, I started taking uh, up to my dose and within a couple of weeks, my hormone levels, because I, I track my bloods quite regularly, mm. Um, FSH went down and my estrogen went quite That's follicle stimulating up. hormone. Now, yeah. well, usually elevated follicle stimulating hormone means you may be coming into menopause. menopause maybe. Yeah. So the higher it is, obviously, the more likely you are to be menopausal. Um, and then my estrogen came right up. Ah. So, And I can get a little bit puffy when I get a bit of estrogen. Well, I've got quite a lot of estrogen in this case. So in my case, it actually has boosted my hormones. Wow. So is this, and I'm going to do a lot more research into this, could this be a key for postmenopausal women wow. getting the dose right yeah. so that you're stopping a lot of hot flushes and yep. all of that sort of thing so um i found that fascinating that in a few weeks of upping my doses that i had significant um changes yeah. from from um, nicotinamide riboside so that wasn't even nnm which i'm going to try next soon because i'm going to wow. why not if one works Druggy. um what but i'm just going to give it a go. can you, you want to talk about your symptoms before you start to take or before you up the dose um oh well you know hot flushes yeah. uh, getting a lot of hot flushes couldn't sleep the, the standard kind of hormonal stuff you get when you're yeah. 50-ish um uh, overnight stopped isn't that amazing not overnight but within two weeks one day i woke up nothing no wow. flush, no good sleep. And that's literally within two weeks of taking, upping the, the um, dosage of these supplements. So it just shows that how powerful they can be. Yeah. You've got to use them right. You've got yep. to get the doses right. You've got yep. to use them in the right way. So don't just run out there and start taking bucket loads yep. of this stuff. You want to make sure you're doing it the right way. Oh, yeah. um, but uh, amazing. So, um, yeah, I, I think um, increasing your NAD levels is so important for um, when we're mm. talking about ageing. Um, so what does uh, how does NAD have a role yeah, in aging? Yeah, what's it got to do with the price of fish? So cellular energy production. Mm. So that's what it helps with that. Um, so in a, NAD plus carries high energy electrons in the process that creates cellular energy. Yes. So NAD is very important. Because electrons for moving NAD. down a chain is called yeah. the electron transfer chain, yeah. and that gives us makes us ATP ultimately. Yeah. Yeah. So so you know the, the, when you say that that's a really important way to boost energy in the body. Yeah. Definitely energy. energy. And I have and I have to admit I found uh, my energy has definitely increased. I think I said to you I was in the gym and I was also lifting a lot heavier as well. So energy wise, great. Wow. So so that's really good. So you're looking at my ankles because they're a bit puffy. That's all. So we're going, Oh, I've got puffy ankles. And that was just that's an indication for me that my estrogen has gone up and yeah. my blood tests also um, showed that as well. So so yeah, that's why you're looking at my ankles. Steve. That's why, yeah. <laughs> not not she, for just, any just other reason. The wife listens to this. <laughs> I say, Look at my I'm puffy gonna ankles, get, Steve. I'm gonna she's gonna have her headphones <laughs> on and she's gonna throw them off. Why are you looking at another girl's ankles? <laughs> yeah, no, you're looking like, at the puffiness of my ankles. So which uh, you know, was the fact that my estrogen has shot up yeah, yeah. so really fascinating. fascinating really fascinating so so yeah wow. um so yeah now, now there's lots of other cool biochemistry in the body but but uh, one my favorite is is is, is the sirtuins which is the there's yeah, seven the of them there is seven and, of them. and then we sort of want to activate them and we want to look after them and that's sort all of you want to just give a quick run there and what they do and where they work in their body yeah uh, three four five are in the mitochondria and the so rest are in the yeah. nucleus and so the two's in the cytoplasm or something yeah so we've got seven yeah. Seven sirtuins. So sirtuins basically are called, they're nicknamed the longevity genes. Yes. So they were only discovered about 20 years ago. Yeah, I did a seven of them about 20 years ago when they were discovered. Oh, there you go, when they first came out. Yeah, so like they play a key no, role. Jack about them. Oh, and they're, they're so cool, though. Like, yeah. All these things are really cool. Um, they play a key role in cellular function, cellular health, aging, and longevity. That's why they're called mm. the longevity genes. Yep. Um, so there are seven of them. Um, so NAD levels natu naturally decline with age, as we said. <laughs> Thanks. And the sirtuins decline right alongside them. So when NAD levels go down, yeah. so do your sirtuin um, genes as well. So they all, all seven sort of behave a little bit differently, but mm. they have the same goal. So that the goal is to regulate cellular yep. health mm. um, and control the aging, aging process. Yep. Um, so cert so three, four, and five are located in the mitochondria. That's right. Uh, one, six, and seven are in the nucleus, and cert two is in the cytoplasm. Um, so all can slow down the cellular senescence, and we're going to talk about cellular senescence next mm. as well because that's a really cool process. Um, well, is and is and isn't. Um, so, yeah, so they can all slow down cellular senescence, um, but some of the main functions of the sirtuins include repairing damaged DNA, yep. um, upregulating up mitochondrial activity, <laughs> so there's that mitochondrial um, yep. connection again, uh, increasing at antioxidant pathways, so again, that NRF2 activation as well with that antioxidant um, switch, uh, antioxidant switch, responding and adapting to cellular stressors yep. as well. 
uh, regulating telomere activity, which we also that's coming telomeres, up as well. Telomeres that, and that, how to lengthen our be, telomeres. Yeah, we want to, I want to make them longer. We want long telomeres, yeah. So, um, so it helps to length, it helps to regulate their activity, controls inflammation, and um, gener generates cellular ATP production. So, um, our sirtuins do a lot. Oh. So, yeah. So we've got, I've got some like highlighted things here. Of what Just give they us a few do. highlights of that because there's, there's a lot of information. There's a lot there. of what, information. What are some of the highlights you found out about? All right. So a, 99, a 1999 study published in Genes and Development yep. found that overexpression of the SIRT2 gene extended the lifespan of yeast by 30%. Didn't you love that? That's amazing, isn't it? I mean, it, that's yeast, yeast and I know we've yeah. done studies and it may not translate to humans. May not, yeah. But what if it gives you 5%? Exactly. It's five years. Yeah, that's right. I mean, there's not a lot done on humans yet, but there's a little bit, but, you know, that usually it's mice. In the longevity studies, um, mice, yeast, yeah. worms are the main kind of um, creatures yep. that it's done on. Um, a 2013 study in cell metabolism yeah. found that increasing CERT1 in the brain led to delayed aging and extended lifespan in mice. Wow. So showing that um, CERT1 are involved in brain health as well. So how Good. cool is that? That's awesome. Yeah. So most of it has been confined to yeast and animal studies, but... Um, there was a study that cert threes have been linked to increase human lifespan in centenar yeah. centenarians. That was a correlation study. So what they yeah. did was they found that they were much higher. So so correlation doesn't mean causation, causation. but it gives a really good indication yeah. of it. Yeah, I exactly. mean, incredible um, about all the stuff that it does. Yeah. Now, now, come on. How do oh, we increase more. it? There's more. Well, there's oh, more. Just, well, just, so cardio, let's just go. Oh. Cardiovascular health, really yep. good for, for that as well. Yep. Um, metabolic health, so you cert one, particularly for that for that one. Cognitive health, as we said, so well, the what, brain. What more do you want? There's what three of them. What more do you want? There's eh? more, I know. Um, and how's to increase it? Okay, so. Yeah, I want, I want to increase it. You want to increase that yeah, You're going to tell me I've got to go to the gym, don't you? I am going to tell you to go to the gym, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the thing going all through this. Exercise, yep. it definitely activates all these longevity yep. pathways. So as, long as, you, as long as you don't tell me resveratrol does this thing too. Oh, I've made it close your ears then, Steve. <laughs> yes, it does. So resveratrol, yes, it does preserve... Well, it looks like it preserves sirtuin function. So, oh. um, so that's pretty cool. So the, the fun fact about resveratrol, everyone thinks it's the antioxidant yeah. the activity that's causing all these um, really great results. It doesn't appear that it's any antioxidant activity that's, ha that's causing these results. It's more the ability of resveratrol um, to turn on the body's defences. Ah. So the actual... Act Actually, act uh, d depends on the body's defences to stressors, right? That um, has all these benefits, and that activates your sirtuins as well. So, <laughs> interesting, uh, interestingly, and resveratrol. Let me say it is re in red wine, but to get the doses that you would need to be therapeutic, you'd have to drink about a thousand glasses. I think. Oh, it is, that's about like that. That's in a here. Saturday night for me. So, okay, there you go. That's right. Your alcohol and your cocaine. Yeah, night, yeah, yeah <laughs> and the cocaine bender. <laughs> yeah, that's Look, right. as long as you don't tell me I have to starve, um, then I'll be happy. Well, I won't tell you that. <laughs> Go and say it. So. Well, calorie restriction does uh, support so it, one, three, and six. Um, so yeah, so so calorie restriction is one. Increasing your NAD levels, so with your NMN yep. nicotine um, or your NR, so yep. um, nicotinamide riboside, can be helpful as well. Curcumin again yep. supports so it, one expression and quercetin. All the standards, really. It, it is all the standards, it is, isn't it? Yeah. So so you can see a theme running through all this. Yeah. Um, and, and it's incredible, but but we'll we'll, we'll save the theme until we, we go through one more part of longevity, which is telomeres. Telomeres. What I mean, I'm telomeres? sure a lot of people have heard about telomeres. I think a lot of people have, haven't they? Yeah, I think so. I mean, involved in anti Hayflick Hayflick limit? Has anyone heard about that? The what? Hayflick limit. Hayflick limit. Yeah, um, Professor Hayflick developed a limit of how much cells can replicate about 50 ah. times. Oh, right. I went to a talk in, in uh, Las Vegas uh, uh, about 10 years ago, mm. and he was there. The, the oh, there you go. Yeah. I sure have Neve say that. I have heard, I have yeah. heard of that, but I, yeah, I didn't know. Ah, anyway, he talks about telomere shorting every time the cells replicate. Yes, yeah, so every tell, time. Tell us about telomeres. Tell so me, telomeres, I mean, think? I think most people know, they're like the little caps at the end of your chromosomes, yep. and they basically protect it. So when the cell divides, yeah. um, it can impact chromosomes, little bits can break off. Yep. So it basically um, protects that chromosome. It's like a shoelace. Yeah, like a shoelace. Little plastic um, thing. What, what do we say, <laughs> Stephen? An aglet. An aglet. 
She likes aglet. <laughs> we were trying to remember what the thing at the end of your shoe is. Yeah. She likes aglet, apparently. Jeez. All those people want to know. I thought you were swearing at me. Trivia night. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so it's like the little shoe left. She loves Agla at the end of your chromosome, oh, and it basically protects it. See, now I'm learning new words, not just nerdy ones, but simply <laughs> no, ones right. I'll never use used again. Um, so I thought that was something you wore around your ankles. Uh, that's an anklet. Oh, okay. Yeah, not an aglet. Aglet. <laughs> yeah. So, Are you making up words now? No, seriously, oh, okay, no, right. no, not at all. Um, so, yeah, so, and that can actually shorten. So as, as you, your um, cells continue to divide, it will shorten a little bit. Um, but there is some evidence to show that plant compounds can support the activity of telomerase, which is the ah, enzyme that actually helps to elongate telomeres. So we want to make sure that we're, we're activating our telomerase yes. um, activity. But see, I've got here, did you know, Steve, over the average human lifestyle, life um, time, the body's cells divide up to 10 quadrillion times. <laughs> Jeez. That's a lot of zeros. So that's a lot. That's a lot of time for cells to be damaged. Ten quadrillion. Ten quadrillion up I to can't ten. Even, yeah, yeah. I think that's. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> so four zeros on top of a trillion. Know. I don't know. That's a lot, right? That's a lot. So that's a lot of opportunities for DNA to snap off your chromosomes. Yeah. So you want to make sure your tel telomeres are as staying nice and healthy and as long as possible. Yeah. Um, so, so, so they shorten as we age. Yeah, so they shorten as we age. Um, What's that called? Process. That's called uh, telomere shortening. Is called telomere attrition. That's it. Attrition. So I love that word. We want to stop telomere attrition, um, and we want to. Well, I do because I'm so activate old. Activate our tel telomerase to elongate our um, telomeres. I'm just hanging out to find out how to do this. There you go. Well, short, do you want to know what short telomeres are associated with, Steve? Oh, go on, tell you me. Because this is going to be me. What is well, it? Well, declines in brain, oh. uh, brain and immune function, yeah. visual acuity. Oops, we're both wearing Got glasses. glasses. Mine's stronger than yours. <laughs> yeah, that, that's right. Weakening of the heart and oh. blood vessels. Oh. Yeah, so we don't want to have short telomeres. We don't want that. Come on, t tell me, how, how do I elongate these things and don't right. say resveratrol again? Oh, Steve, <laughs> I have resveratrol. So oh. resveratrol is... Can activate telomerase. You know, we don't sell resveratrol here, resveratrol. by the way. We don't, no. We I mean, you know, it we wouldn't be a bad any. idea, but it's just not something we do. But, geez, no. I'll tell you what, you know. So if you're wondering why we're promoting it, oh, they're probably full up. No, we don't. We're not. We're just, we're, we want to put the information out yeah. there for help, to help people. So it's not all about, you know, about product flocking and what, or anything. And, and what else? Come um, on, what else? So silly marin. So St. Mary's uh, thistle milk again. Milk thistle again. It's the, uh, it's the same, uh, Shit, same cast, good, really. Shit. Astragalus. Oh, yeah, love that herb. Yep. Um, vitamin D. Yep. So there's a little study here oh, yeah. where a group of, granted, overweight Americans at a dose of 2,000 IU a day, so not even a big dose, nah, pretty small I'd dose. I'd 5,000. Yeah. Um, that increased the subject's telomerase activity by more than 19%. Well, that's good. Listen to this one. What? Vitamin C. Very Acid. Good for, yep. Yep. Acid again. Kills <laughs> Activating us. telomerase. Kills um, so there's a study here demonstrated that, and we've got links if people want the links yep. to the studies, um, that telomere shortening uh, can be reduced by up to 62% oh. on untreated controls in cultures, mind you, yeah. in human blood cell vessels with vitamin C. Wow. How awesome is that? So an in vitro study. And that's amazing. It's, look, vitamin D and vitamin C are probably the most two common supplements yeah. on the planet. Yeah. And so, you know, you should be on them. And, yeah, definitely. And what, what other vitamins can you do? Vitamin E. E. Yep. So yep. Um, it slows the, the shortening of age-related oh, um, telomere reduction it's good as stuff, well. good stuff, isn't it? EPA, DHA, so pretty much what we're talking about in the first oils, part. Fish oils, yeah. again. Um, so there's another study here, and I've got links if you want them. Uh, measured telomere length in humans given fish oil. The yep. results showed that reducing omega-6 fatty acids yep. and increasing your omega-3 resulted yep. in increasing your telomere length. Yep. So that's really good as well. Um, B vitamins, because... Um, High homocysteine levels can actually shorten your telomeres as well. Mm. So you want to get your B vitamins in, lower your homocysteine levels, and apparently that can help also. And you're going to tell me I've got to exercise. Do hopefully just going for walks oh, enough, is it or not? Sorry, Steve. Yeah, you're going to have to exercise, but unfortunately a walk isn't going to do it. It's not going to do it. It's not going to do it. So studies show that high-intensity interval training. The worst kind. See, this is, what, this is something you do, aerobic endurance training as well. Yeah. So you're running Long really distances. good for that. I um, showed the most benefit, more benefit than regular aerobic training. And sadly, because this is my favorite, resistance training didn't really show me much nah, benefit not, at all. No, not for this, does it? No. It no. does other things? Yeah, amazing for other bad, things. No. But 
What about some weird stuff that oh, we can do? Well, if you have a, just a handy old hyperbaric oxygen chamber in your in your backyard or your oh, back room, then that, jump in that. It's because... part of my rider that I come and do this <laughs> podcast. Right. I get hyperbaric oxygen. Yeah, but so hyperbaric oxygen therapy can increase telomere length. Oh. And it's a senolytic, which we're getting to senolytics as well. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I, I love think that's... the other name for senolytic cells. They've got a really cool. Oh, nickname. I know. We will get to that. Yeah, um, but apparently LA, this is getting quite big. They've got hyperbaric oxygen therapy rooms that people go to and jump in, in Brisbane these. Too. Are they? Yeah, really. Yeah. I see. I live in the bush. I was bush. talking to one of the sales rep today, and yeah, you you live in, I live in the bush. There's nothing out there. Oxygen hasn't been invented out there yet. <laughs> no, it has but, not. Um, no, I should say that. <laughs> you live in a great part of the world. But but yeah, they have a hyperbaric oxygen chambers here. Um, well, there you go. The so people can sales. jump onto it. Yeah. or into it. Into it, literally, yeah. and then get pressurised. And get pressurised. So, yeah, increase your telomeres and now, uh, kill off your senescent cells, which we're going to do. Now, senescent cells, what's the Senescent cells, them? zombie cells. I love that. Can we call them zombie cells? Yeah, let's call them just zombie like cells. Zombie. I know. I just want to like say zombie Zombie on apocalypse yeah. going on in everyone's body. Yeah. Well, they kind of are zombies, aren't they, the cells? They are zombies, yeah, and we'll explain why they're zombies. Yeah. So, um, what are they? Well, so when you age, your body accumulates lots of damaged cells. So I'm right? virtually a zombie now. Yeah, good. That's right. Um, so when they get damaged, um, yep. they well, when they age, they become damaged, and they go through kind of an aging process as yep. well, and it's called cellular senescence. Yeah, I know about that. Yeah, so basically what happens <laughs> if, if they, they replicate too many times, they can get damaged, and they kind of um, aren't really useful anymore. Mm -hmm. So what they do is they release a compound, and the compound is called SASP. 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 So love these, it's called senescence associated secretory phenotype. Phenotype, yeah. Yeah, so they re, they re, they um, secrete this compound, um, and that sort of gets the attention of the immune system, and the immune system will come in and clean them up, yeah. and kill them off. But what can happen is they can um, get to the point where the immune system won't be activated and so these cells actually are sitting there and they're not dying but they're not really doing anything metabolically either so they're kind of just sitting there so like a zombie yeah they're not doing anything but they're they won't die and they're the just streets. wandering around and what they do when they wander around is they can actually spread this sasp <laughs> to surrounding cells and turn them into senescent cells as well so zombie they're therefore these zombie, like zombie apocalypse <laughs> so it's a really easy one to study because they are zombie cells they, are zombie they go cells, around yeah. they bite or you know, leave crap and yeah, and they just spread cells. themselves around. And they do. Um, there's, I think, I don't know if it's a sass, but they um, excrete like a, a blue kind of a dye. Oh, I didn't and know it was blue. as they, I think they did it in mice. Okay. And then the older you get, the more blue dye you have. So that's oh. showing that these senescent cells do build up as you get older. Oh. Um, and obviously they, you know, attaching to all these surrounding cells and saying, "Hey, come and join the apocalypse." So then we're getting more and more and more. So I we want to kill off these senescent cells. Of course we do, because these are contributing to aging, along with all the other things that Louis spoken about. Yep. Um, so, hey, Steve, how do you oh, think we uh, do that? No, nah, you're not going to tell me it's got like quercetin <laughs> again and yeah, oh, something like that. What, what, yeah. what, what, what kills these guys off? Quercetin, Steve. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> quercetin. You know. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, where's my phone? I'm going to order some now. <laughs> Resveratrol, quercetin, oh, all quercetin. this sort yeah, of stuff. Order yeah. that. So quercetin, very good for killing. Um, they're, they're called. These are what are called senolytics. So senolytics are what kill senescent cells. So um, quercetin. Um, yep. Facetin is another one. Oh, that's you don't more see potent, that. Yeah. yeah, it's more potent. You don't see it around as much, but apparently no. it's more potent than quercetin. But no. I think quercetin. Plenty. Very good. Um, specific form of quercetin too, because quercetin's not overly absorbable, mm. so you want to get a good form of it. Um, I have it on empty stomach helps. Yeah, so some say empty, empty stomach, and some say with food. So oh, it depends. I mean, I some I do both. Some okay. have an, I'll have one dose with, on an empty stomach and another dose with food. Why do you look I'm, so friggin' young? You're I'm trying, trying to cover all bases. <laughs> Well, I am not even on that. And I take a good form. I take a phytosome form, basically, because oh, it's more absorbable, more, yeah. my, more bioactive. So, um, and that way, I don't need to take as much of it. You can take a lower dose and get the full effect. Yeah. So, good, good quality quercetin. Um, luteolin. Yeah, it's good. That's that a one. really good one as well. Good one. Yeah, and uh, curcumin. Ugh. So, there's some top ones that help. They're good senolytics. Um, Exercise as well, Steve. Yeah, We're going to get to exercise. Exercise is a bit of a senolytic as well. <laughs> Kills off his senescent cells, your zombie cells. So, um, so yeah. So, so what have we looked at? We've looked at, at amp, amp, activating our AMP K pathway. AMP K. I'm just going to acronym them. NERF two. Yep. Oh, mitochondria. NERF two. Mitochondria. Getting mitochondria healthy. Yep. Um, activating your sirtuin genes. Yep. Sirtuin genes. N -N Increasing your NAD levels. Yep. Killing off your senescent. Oh, mTOR. So we're reducing our mTOR uh, yep. activation, and we're MK. 
MK, yep, we said MK. Come oh, on, Steve, I don't know. Keep I'm up. Losing track of <laughs> all three letter things. We're <laughs> we talking about to, zombie cells. Killing off, we want to kill our, our, our zombie cells as well. Oh, Jesus. So this is like, so so there, there's compounds, and I can't remember all of them for all of them, but, yeah. but resveratrol features heavily. Resveratrol, yep, a really strong uh, Quercetin. feature. Quercetin, yep. Turmeric. Turmeric. Luteolin. Yep. S- um, Silymarin. Silymarin, yep. yep. Milk thistle. Yep. So um, it, just, just, just those them five. alone. Amazing. And yeah. they're good for so many things. Like yeah. Silibo Mariana we use to repair your liver. Yeah, really so, good for So the great for that. Turmeric is good for any sort of inflammation in the body. So that's a, mm-hmm. a good one too. And, and, and resveratrol is good for absolutely everything. Mm. Yeah, it's really um, great. Crescetin is an anti-inflammatory, really good yeah. for stabilizing mast cells, immune yep. system, viruses. I mean, you, 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 you wouldn't, you know, CoQ10, we, we haven't CoQ10, mentioned that. We didn't mention that, but we did mention uh, that. But yeah, the podcast that that. we mentioned earlier. I mean... These are cool supplements that, yeah. that are healthy and natural mm. that we should be having every day mm. if you wanted to live forever. Yeah, exactly. And as, as Queen said, who wants to live well, forever? Right. Exactly. Who does want to live forever? That's the only time I get to sing on these podcasts. I know. I let you go, Steve, because yeah. I just feel bad. I don't want to shut you down. But, yeah. So there's some really good supplements that we can use. <laughs> but then we've got some lifestyle things we can do oh, as well. Screw Steve. those. No, no, you're right. Screw there's, those, there's, eh? there's, there's, there's exercise. but Well, we talked about exercise. So it boosts NAD levels. Yep. Um, it builds more mitochondria, yep. as we said. Um, would you want to know? This is pretty cool. So, God, tell me, because I love, I I like to know how things work. Yes, like I'm a breakdown of things. That, so you know when you start exercising and you get quite puffed quite quickly. Yes, and then you exercise a little bit more, and then you find, oh, I'm not so puffed. Yeah, and then a little bit longer. So you you don't get as breathless get the longer fitter. you go oh, on. The reason is because you're making more mitochondria, mm. which is making ATP. So you're getting yep. more energy, um, and it uh, makes more um, blood vessels. So you're getting more. Angiogenesis. Exactly. Yeah, so, so that's helping with your oxygen as well. So that's why you get a little bit um, you're less breathless as you go along. So you're yeah. making that mitochondria, increasing your oxygen, um, all that sort of thing. Can reduce senescent cells, as we said. Yep. Um, zombie cells. Don't call them senescent cells. So zombie cells, technique. zombie cells. So exercise, really good. Um, and then, uh, but then on the other hand, we, we want to do the fasting, but we also want to activate Ugh. mTOR for our muscle mass because Good muscle mass is yeah. attributed, um, quality protein associated with longevity as mm. well. Mm. Because you know, as you get older, the less muscle mass you have, obviously, there's a lot of other issues that go along with that. Yep. But also falls. Yeah. So more inclined to get falls if you're not as stable, you don't have that muscle. And then if you do fall, um, the the healing outcome is better if you have better muscle mass yeah. than if you don't as well. So, um, so that's really really important. And this is a big one, and we're doing it right now. And I've been doing it all day. Sitting is the new smoking. Uh. Really bad for our I've been in meetings all day really and steering bad. around all day. and We all do it. And a lot of people have desk jobs. So they get up in the morning, they go to work, they sit at a desk all day, they come home, sit down, eat their dinner and go to bed. So they're sitting continually. And there's studies showing that there's a level of um, muscle atrophy in your, like your glutes and even your quads when you're sitting all day. So my ass is shrinking? Yeah, it's just shrinking, Steve. I can't believe it can shrink yeah, anymore. I know. So get up. I mean, I've got a standing desk at home. So I use a standing desk, and when I'm and I stand up a lot, and then when I sit down, Do I've you? got a mini cycle under my desk. So I really. <laughs> so when Are I you sit, serious, <laughs> serious, She's I can't sit girl. still. I hate sitting still. So I'll, I'll pedal. Yeah. It's under the desk. So it's not. It's not like it doesn't make me puff, but it moves my legs, and um, so I'm moving. Yeah. And then when I'm not sitting and pedaling, I'm standing. So uh. there are things you can. There's things you can do to offset having to be, you know, the, rather than sitting all day at a desk, because that's a terrible thing to do. So oh, it's, yeah. It's so awful. yeah. So exercise, movement, obviously really good. And then here's another one for you, Steve, which it's, is like all the rage one. at I'm the moment. It, I mean, well, let's just guess. Cold therapy. Yeah. Yeah. Cold it's, therapy it's really good for... Um, shrinkage. <laughs> yeah. Really good for sh- <laughs> apparently really good for shrinkage as well. Um, <laughs> so cold therapy, and they're, re- they're thinking the mechanism behind this anti-aging is it activates brown fat. Oh, yeah. You're shivering. Yeah. So babies have high amounts of, I didn't know brown this, babies fat. have high amounts of brown Absolutely. fat because they can't shiver yeah. until they're about one. So yeah. they have this brown fat that actually keeps them warm. Um, so adults actually have brown fat as well, but may, it's mainly on our back. Yeah, and it's apparently. less. Yeah, so there's less of it. So, um, but when the, that brown fat is activated, mm. it obviously helps our um, metabolic function. It can turn white fat to beige to brown. Yep. So that's really so good. So can exercise. Um, and so can exercise as well. Exercise. Um, so there's a gene called PRDM16. Oh, that, that one. actually what turns that 
that that um, white to brown. It really my, mitochondrialises your white cells. That's yeah. right. Mm. And there's there's mice studies showing that mice that lack that gene have no brown fat, and they also develop type two diabetes and cardiovascular disease. Oh yeah, they would. Brown fat has more mitochondria. Yep, because that's well. what it is. The colouring yep. is the mitochondria. Yep, and the mitochondria in your brown fat's a little bit different. So um, they contain high levels of uncoupling proteins. Oh, that's what we want. Yeah. So these insert into the membrane of the mitochondria and allow protons that were built up to leak through the cell rather than um, go through, rather than be pumped out. So this creates less free radical production or free radical damage. Um, so then less free radical damage is obviously going to be beneficial down the track as well. So um, increasing... I'm going to have to get back in an ice bath, aren't I? I know, and I don't... I mean, like, I'll, I'll do a cold bath and a cold shower, but I just can't do the can't ice do bath those. thing. I just can't. Blah. And then on the other side of the scale... And that's the, there we go back to hormesis as well. Yep, so that's stress. a little bit of a stress on the mm. body. Um, exercise is a stressor on yep. the body. Cold and heat is also a stressor on the body. Oh. So heat therapy... There's a li- lot less um, research around heat therapy. Yeah, I think it's not good. as popular mm. because who wants to be hot, really? Well, I don't. I'm hot. Already, um, but <laughs> but <laughs> that's true. Our video well, I mean, who wants to feel <laughs> the heat from being yeah. in a hot environment? I mean, everyone wants to be hot, I suppose, yes. But um, so, yeah, so um, so heat is an, it creates hormesis again. Yep. And heat shock proteins help to fold proteins correctly oh, and stimulate beneficial see, pathways yeah. for health, such that's as good. building new blood vessels, more mitochondria. Oh. Um, so in worm models, turning up heat shock proteins cause them to live longer. So oh. there you go. So get a little bit of heat in there as well. Wow. Be a little bit, get hot, be uncomfortable. Yeah, Pretty I'm, easy in I, Queensland. It happens a lot for me. Yeah. Happened on the weekend for me, I was working. Yeah. So this is so, amazing. I mean, we, 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 there's so many things we can do so to live do. longer. Yeah. And you've just touched on a few, and we've, we've really run out of time. It's mm. only late in the evening, yeah. But, but and yeah, is it refreshing because okay. someone's like, oh, it's all this, I've got a sick this, I've got whatever disease. This is about, no, no, I've done all that. Mm. Now I want to move on yeah. and live longer. Got everything healthy on track, then then you want to start implementing some of these anti-aging yep. things. And we can also track as well. So that yep. we didn't talk, we don't have time to talk about trackers, but trackers yeah. can be another way. They're good. Um, blood markers that we, particular blood markers that yep. we look at for aging. Yep. And there's bio-age testing as well. There is. So, yeah, they, and they're amazing. They look at your biological age versus your chronological age, yep. your pace of aging, your telomere length, yep. um, weight loss response report. Um, so really good way to look at what your um, biological age is and where you're sitting in the ageing. And you can't... So you can test. The, that's a, a test you, you can do. You can't manage what you can't measure. So this is a great direct measurement. I think test and measure is amazing. I mean, uh, look, people say, oh, naturopaths test a lot. I don't over-test, but... Um, we have this. We have this technology, and we have the resources available that we didn't have before. And tracking is an amazing way to sort of, you know, mm. measure how things. You can't do something and then not track to see if it's no. working. No. So, and I kind of look at it like like your car and, and um, your, your car. So you take your car to the to the service, get serviced every now and then. Yep. You have your dashboard. It gives you all your readouts of everything that's going on, so yep. you can track what's what's happening, yep. what's not happening. So why are we not doing that for ourselves? We get our own dashboard and our own health dashboard to see where we're at. We you know put ourselves through all these um, these processes to keep our, our really bodies nice and healthy. Yeah, so so yeah, I love tracking. I mean, I, like that's I said, good. I do a lot of experiments and tracking on myself. <laughs> some of them work. <laughs> some work, some don't. Um, <laughs> but hey, you know, it's for the good of the but, people. But what a, what a great list of supplements you gave, and, and they're, they're readily available. They're not by a lot, you're not super expensive. No. Most of them are readily available from most health food shops, or they yeah, can see you to get the, the quality stuff. Look, I, yeah, just be careful what you get, is yeah. all I will say. It's the, the quality of some things and the form of some of them yeah. as well, so make sure you're getting the right things. The right I use tins. practitioner products yeah. um, because they're, they're good quality. So, but, but yes, the, it's, this is definitely a cheap, you know, obtainable for everybody. So. And everyone should be on this path. I really believe yeah. that. You, you want to increase your health span. I didn't say lifespan. No, health span. Because you want your health span. Everyone knows what that is now. Mm. What an amazing, amazing, amazing roundup. Well, yeah. that's about all we've got time for, but I think if we live longer, we can do more of these podcasts. That's right. Let's so do we better it then. go and get our resveratrol. All right, I'm going now. I'm going to get it. And our, Bloody amazing. And our non eating, Steve. And not eating. I can <laughs> yeah. manage that for yeah. five minutes. Yeah. Well, let's get, we're all that time, so yeah, we'll thanks, see you all guys. next week. Yeah, see you guys. Take care. Bye. Bye.